Hypercholesterolemia, Wikipedia Audio Hypercholesterolemia, also called high cholesterol, is the presence of high levels of cholesterol in the blood. It is a form of high blood lipids and hyperlipoproteinemia. Elevated levels of non-HDL cholesterol and LDL in the blood may be a consequence of diet, obesity, inherited diseases, or the presence of other diseases such as diabetes and an underactive thyroid. Cholesterol is one of three major classes of lipids which all animal cells use to construct their membranes and is thus manufactured by all animal cells. Plant cells do not manufacture cholesterol. It is also the precursor of the steroid hormones and bile acids. Since cholesterol is insoluble in water, it is transported in the blood plasma within protein particles. Lipoproteins are classified by their density, very low density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, intermediate density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. All the lipoproteins carry cholesterol, but elevated levels of the lipoproteins other than HDL, particularly LDL cholesterol, are associated with an increased risk of atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease. In contrast, higher levels of HDL cholesterol are protective. Signs and Symptoms Avoiding trans fats and replacing saturated fats in adult diets with polyunsaturated fats are recommended dietary measures to reduce total blood cholesterol and LDL in adults. In people with very high cholesterol, diet is often not sufficient to achieve the desired lowering of LDL, and lipid lowering medications are usually required. If necessary, other treatments such as LDL apheresis or even surgery are performed. About 34 million adults in the United States have high blood cholesterol. Although hypercholesterolemia itself is asymptomatic, long-standing elevation of serum cholesterol can lead to atherosclerosis. Over a period of decades, Elevated serum cholesterol contributes to formation of atheromatous plagues in the arteries. This can lead to progressive narrowing of the involved arteries. Alternatively smaller plagues may rupture and cause a clot to form and obstruct blood flow. A sudden blockage of a coronary artery may result in a heart attack. A blockage of an artery supplying the brain can cause a stroke. If the development of the stenosis or occlusion is gradual, blood supply to the tissues and organs slowly diminishes until organ function becomes impaired. At this point tissue ischemia may manifest as specific symptoms. For example, temporary ischemia of the brain may manifest as temporary loss of vision, dizziness and impairment of balance, difficulty speaking weakness or numbness or tingling, usually on one side of the body. Insufficient blood supply to the heart may cause chest pain, and ischemia of the eye may manifest as transient visual loss in one eye. Insufficient blood supply to the legs may manifest as calf pain when walking, while in the intestines it may present as abdominal pain after eating a meal. Some types of hypercholesterolemia lead to specific physical findings. For example, familial hypercholesterolemia may be associated with xanthelasma palpebrarum, arcus senilis, and xanthomata of the tendons, especially of the fingers. Type 3 hyperlipidemia may be associated with xanthomata of the palms, knees, and elbows. Hypercholesterolemia is typically due to a combination of environmental and genetic factors. Environmental factors include obesity, diet, and stress. A number of other conditions can also increase cholesterol levels including diabetes mellitus type 2, obesity, alcohol use, monoclonal gammopathy, dialysis, nephrotic syndrome 
hypothyroidism, Cushing's syndrome, anorexia nervosa, medications. Genetic contributions are usually due to the additive effects of multiple genes, though occasionally may be due to a single gene defect such as in the case of familial hypercholesterolemia. Genetic abnormalities are in some cases completely responsible for hypercholesterolemia, such as in familial hypercholesterolemia, where one or more genetic mutations in the autosomal dominant APOB gene exist, the autosomal recessive adult RAP1 gene, autosomal dominant familial hypercholesterolemia variant of the PCSK9 gene, or the LDL receptor gene. Familial hypercholesterolemia affects about 1 in 500 people. Diet has an effect on blood cholesterol, but the size of this effect varies between individuals. Moreover, when dietary cholesterol intake goes down, production typically increases, so that blood cholesterol changes can be modest or even elevated. This compensatory response may explain hypercholesterolemia in anorexia. A 2016 review found tentative evidence that dietary cholesterol is associated with higher blood cholesterol. Trans fats have been shown to reduce levels of HDL while increasing levels of LDL. LDL and total cholesterol also increases by very high fructose intake. Glucocorticoids increase cholesterol LDL production by increasing production and activity of HMGCOA reductase. These include the physiologic stress hormone cortisol and commonly used medicines for asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, or connective tissue disorders. Other steroid hormones and drugs are also implicated. In contrast, the thyroid hormone decreases cholesterol production. Hence, hypothyroidism causes hypercholesterolemia. Causes Hypercholesterolemia may be a side effect of a number of medications including blood pressure medication, anticonvulsants, immunosuppressives, human immunodeficiency virus therapy, and interferons. Cholesterol is measured in milligrams per deciliter of blood in the United States and some other countries. In the United Kingdom, most European countries and Canada, millimoles per liter of blood is the measure. For healthy adults, the UK National Health Service recommends upper limits of total cholesterol of 5 mol l and low-density lipoprotein cholesterol of 3 mol l For people at high risk of cardiovascular disease, the recommended limit for total cholesterol is 4 mol l and 2 mol l for LDL. In the United States, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute within the National Institutes of Health classifies total cholesterol of less than 200 mg DL as desirable, 200 to 239 mg DL as borderline high, and 240 mg DL or more as high. No absolute cutoff between normal and abnormal cholesterol levels exists an interpretation of values must be made in relation to other health conditions and risk factors. Higher levels of total cholesterol increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, particularly coronary heart disease. Levels of LDL or non-HDL cholesterol both predict future coronary heart disease, which is the better predictor is disputed. High levels of small dense LDL may be particularly adverse, although measurement of small dense LDL is not advocated for risk prediction. In the past, LDL and VLDL levels were rarely measured directly due to cost. Levels of fasting triglycerides were taken as an indicator of VLDL levels, while LDL was usually estimated by the Friedewald formula. LDL, total cholesterol, 
HDL Genetics Diet However, this equation is not valid on non-fasting blood samples or if fasting triglycerides are elevated greater than 4.5 mol L. Recent guidelines have, therefore, advocated the use of direct methods for measurement of LDL wherever possible. It may be useful to measure all lipoprotein subfractions when assessing hypercholesterolemia and measurement of A polypa proteins and lipoprotein can also be of value. Genetic screening is now advised if a form of familial hypercholesterolemia is suspected. Stress and hormones Medications Diagnosis Classification Screening Classically, hypercholesterolemia was categorized by lipoprotein electrophoresis and the Fredrickson classification. Newer methods, such as lipoprotein subclass analysis, have offered significant improvements in understanding the connection with atherosclerosis progression and clinical consequences. If the hypercholesterolemia is hereditary, more often a family history of premature, earlier onset atherosclerosis is found. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force in 2008 strongly recommends routine screening for men 35 years and older and women 45 years and older for lipid disorders and the treatment of abnormal lipids in people who are at increased risk of coronary heart disease. They also recommend routinely screening men aged 20 to 35 years and women aged 20 to 45 years if they have other risk factors for coronary heart disease. In 2016 they concluded that testing the general population under the age of 40 without symptoms is of unclear benefit. In Canada, screening is recommended for men 40 and older and women 50 and older. In those with normal cholesterol levels, screening is recommended once every five years. Once people are on a statin further testing provides little benefit except to possibly determine compliance with treatment. Treatment For those at high risk, a combination of lifestyle modification and statins has been shown to decrease mortality. Lifestyle changes recommended for those with high cholesterol include, smoking cessation, limiting alcohol consumption, increasing physical activity, and maintaining a healthy weight. Overweight or obese individuals can lower blood cholesterol by losing weight, on average a kilogram of weight loss can reduce LDL cholesterol by 0.8 mg DL. Eating a diet with a high proportion of vegetables, fruit, dietary fiber, and low in fats results in a modest decrease in total cholesterol. Eating dietary cholesterol causes a small rise in serum cholesterol. Dietary limits for cholesterol were proposed in United States, but not in Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia. However, there is no conclusive evidence regarding the effect of dietary cholesterol on cardiovascular disease. Consequently, in 2015 the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee in the United States removed its recommendation of limiting cholesterol intake. A 2015 Cochrane review found replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat resulted in a small decrease in cardiovascular disease by decreasing blood cholesterol. Other reviews have not found an effect from saturated fats on cardiovascular disease. Trans fats are recognized as a potential risk factor for cholesterol-related cardiovascular disease and avoiding them in an adult diet is recommended. The National Lipid Association recommends that people with familial hypercholesterolemia restrict intakes of total fat to 25-35% of energy intake, saturated fat to less than 7% of energy intake, 
and cholesterol to less than 200 mg per day. Changes in total fat intake in low-calorie diets do not appear to affect blood cholesterol. Lifestyle Increasing soluble fiber consumption has been shown to reduce levels of LDL cholesterol, with each additional gram of soluble fiber reducing LDL by an average of 2.2 mg DL. Increasing consumption of whole grains also reduces LDL cholesterol, with whole grain oats being particularly effective. Inclusion of 2 grams per day of phytosterols and phytostanols and 10 to 20 grams per day of soluble fiber decreases dietary cholesterol absorption. A diet high in fructose can raise LDL cholesterol levels in the blood. Statins are commonly used to treat hypercholesterolemia if diet is ineffective. Other agents that may be used include, fibrates, nicotinic acid, and cholestyramine. These, however, are only recommended if statins are not tolerated or in pregnant women. Statins can reduce total cholesterol by about 50% in the majority of people effects appear similar regardless of the statin used. While statins are effective in decreasing mortality in those who have had previous cardiovascular disease, debate exists over whether or not they are effective in those with high cholesterol but no other health problems. One review did not find a mortality benefit in those at high risk, but without prior cardiovascular disease. Other reviews concluded a mortality benefit does exist. Statins may improve quality of life when used in people without existing cardiovascular disease. Statins decrease cholesterol in children with hypercholesterolemia, but no studies as of 2010 show improved clinical outcomes and diet is the mainstay of therapy in childhood. Injectable antibodies against the protein PCSK9 can reduce LDL cholesterol and have been shown to reduce mortality. Diet 2 According to a survey in 2002, alternative medicine was used in an attempt to treat cholesterol by 1.1% of U.S. adults. Consistent with previous surveys, this one found the majority of individuals used it in conjunction with conventional medicine. A review of trials of phytosterols and slash or phytostanols, average dose 2.15 g slash day, reported an average of 9% lowering of LDL cholesterol. In 2000, the Food and Drug Administration approved the labeling of foods containing specified amounts of phytosterol esters or phytostanol esters as cholesterol lowering. In 2003, an FDA interim health claim rule extended that label claim to foods or dietary supplements delivering more than 0.8 g day of phytosterols or phytostanols. Some researchers, however, are concerned about diet supplementation with plant sterol esters and draw attention to lack of long-term safety data. Rates of high total cholesterol in the United States in 2010 are just over 13%, down from 17% in 2000. Medication Alternative medicine Epidemiology Average total cholesterol in the United Kingdom is 5.9 mol slash L, while in rural China and Japan, average total cholesterol is 4 mol slash L. Rates of coronary artery disease are high in Great Britain, but low in rural China and Japan. Various clinical practice guidelines have addressed the treatment of hypercholesterolemia. The National Cholesterol Education Program revised their guidelines, however, their 2004 revisions have been criticized for use of non-randomized, observational data. In the UK, 
the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence has made recommendations for the treatment of elevated cholesterol levels, published in 2008. The Task Force for the Management of Dyslipidemias of the European Society of Cardiology and the European Atherosclerosis Society published guidelines for the management of dyslipidemias in 2011. Gene therapy is being studied as a potential treatment. Among people whose life expectancy is relatively short, hypercholesterolemia is not a risk factor for death by any cause including coronary heart disease. Among people older than 70, hypercholesterolemia is not a risk factor for being hospitalized with myocardial infarction or angina. There are also increased risks in people older than 85 in the use of statin drugs. Because of this, medications which lower lipid levels should not be routinely used among people with limited life expectancy. The American College of Physicians recommends for hypercholesterolemia in people with diabetes. Research Special Populations